Hi, my name is Valerie. Welcome to another WordPress tutorial from Motopress. In this video, I'll show you how to add a table of contents to your page or post using the Gatwit WordPress Blocks add-on. Navigation is an essential part of any website, and I won't surprise you if I say it's not limited to menus only. A table of contents is another navigation tool that you can use if you have long articles. Adding a table of contents will definitely make it much easier for your readers to navigate between sections of your writing or redirect readers to their desired sections at a glance. It not only improves readability and engagement, but it adds benefit to your website's SEO. First, you must install the Gatwit plugin on your WordPress website. In case you are an active user of the add-on, you can skip this part of the video with the help of the timestamps available in the description box down below and go straight to the chapter you are most interested in. But if you haven't heard about Gatwit or had no time to appreciate Gatwit's uh, benefits, Gatwit is a library of extra Gutenberg blocks and design templates. So thanks to extension as Gatwit, you can supercharge Gutenberg in ways you never imagined before. So Gatwit is available on motopress.com or in the official WordPress plugin repository, so it can be downloaded to your computer or installed directly from uh, inside the WordPress admin dashboard. Uh, by the way, for today's video, I'm using the official starter theme for Gatwin Gutenberg Blocks plugin. Since it's truly a multi-purpose solution, you may utilize it for a business or creative project, and be sure you automatically keep in pace with any WordPress updates. So now let's take a look at how you can easily add a table of contents block. Open the post where you want to add the table of contents to. We see I've already added a section block by Gatwit to create a fancier background. You can also apply animation effects or add more decorative elements with this block. So I've also used it to be a container block for organizing my multiple child blocks inside it. Now look at what blocks have been nested inside the section block. And these are headings and paragraphs. Headings are a key notion here. It is headings that structure and organize your content, introduce new sections and subsections, break up the text, and make it readable to both visitors and search engines. And of course, they populate the table of contents. The dedicated blog by Gatwit will generate a table of contents based exactly on the headings presented on the page. As for the section block, it's optional. You can do without it when it comes to the table of contents. For instance, you can choose another container block or don't use any of them. It depends on the layout uh, of your site you want to achieve. Nevertheless, Gatwit users consider section block to be the most valuable and feature-rich block among Gatwit blocks, so I strongly recommend checking it out too. One more important detail about headings. Headings follow a six-level hierarchy to rank them by importance and give order to your content. The most important heading has the rank of level 1 and should be reserved for the page or post title to ensure search engine optimization. WordPress automatically assigns each one to the title of your pages and posts. Consequently, by default, the first heading on the page will be H2. H3 is used to organize subsections, while H4, 5, and 6 are intended to provide additional information with details. And as you may guess, you can choose your heading level in the toolbar of each of the heading blocks. And now you see which levels I've used for the headings of my text. 
So I've used different levels on purpose to demonstrate how it works and what it looks like in the table of contents. Also note, I've inserted the core heading blocks for this example, but if you want to achieve a more sophisticated look for your headings, you should definitely check out uh, this video where we go through the settings of the advanced heading block by Gatwind and try it out. Now we're going to find an appropriate place uh, for the table of contents block. You can surely insert a block in any part of a page, but usually it comes at the beginning. Then click on the Add Block button. A drop-down will appear with all your available blocks. Scroll down to the Get With section and look for the Table of Contents block. Click on it to edit. That's it. We have successfully edited Table of Contents to the post. Remember, you can do it just once. Uh, that is, uh, there can be several tables of contents on the same page or post. And these are the settings available with the blog. Today we've talked a lot about headings and here in the right sidebar you can select which headings to show or hide. You can simply switch the toggle on each heading level to include or exclude it. And now I'm going to show you the list of styling options. You can change the default table of contents styling options by opting for none or switch your table of contents between uh, bullets and an ordered list. Also, I should mention that your theme dictates the styles of your table of contents. Mainly, these are colors and font settings. Here on the floating toolbar, we see some standard icons like changing the alignment of the blocks. Um, additionally, by clicking the three dots icon, you'll see more helpful tools. Moving the block is really easy too. If you want to move the block up or down a few positions, you can use the up or down arrows on the floating toolbar. Uh, for extensive moves, you can use a drag and drop handle to drag and drop uh, the block. You need to click on the six dots icon, and once you click and hold your mouse on that icon, you can drag the block anywhere on the page. And now I will show you how to update your table of contents. If you decide to extend your article, uh, and add more paragraphs with headings, I mean new heading separated content, and this is what I'm doing now. Don't forget to click the refresh arrow icon on the toolbar for the new items to appear in the table. Then we are previewing uh, to know everything is all right, and after that, we are ready to publish. This is what we see on the front end. By the way, if you want to learn how to wrap text around images in Gutenberg, as I did for my article, don't miss a tutorial devoted to this topic on our channel. To sum up, including a table of contents on your site's post is always a great idea. This blog becomes like a roadmap for your whole content and allows you to see the structure of long posts and helps with search engine optimization. Moreover, this add-on will improve the user experience by allowing the readers to quickly navigate to relevant sections without having to scroll. And all that is possible with the dedicated blog by GetRid. I hope you spend this time with benefits and learned some useful information for you. I'd love to get your feedback on GetWit and its blog. Have you tested the plugin and this particular blog? Would you use it or are you using it now? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. And now all I ask for you is to give this video a thumbs up and if you like 
tutorials like this, uh, subscribe to the channel and tap the notification bell. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.